Hi guys, it's Kirsty. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the idea of bringing emotions along for the ride. So I'll talk about what I mean by that and give some examples of why that's applicable in OCD recovery. And I will obviously bring into it some of my own experiences and I can talk about some of my own examples as well. But before I go into that, I'd like to ask, please do subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below in order to stay up to date with new videos as they're released. So on this channel, we often speak about bringing anxiety along for the ride. And by that, we mean not allowing anxiety to affect the choices that we make and stop us from doing the things that we want to do or that ideally we would be doing in order to kind of keep our day to day lives running. Whether that's, you know, if you have children, you know, whether that's spending time with your children, um, making dinner for them or taking them to school, etc. Or if you're working, that's, you know, going to your job and doing the job that you want to do. Um, or it might be going out with your friends, socialising or exercising or any kind of hobbies. So we always say we don't want to let our anxiety rule our lives. We don't want to have anxiety making the decisions for us. So therefore, we talk about wearing our anxiety like an uncomfortable coat. So, you know, going about our day to day lives, doing the things that we want to do with or without anxiety and bringing it with us. You know, anxiety comes along where we go. Um, you know, it doesn't stop us from doing the things that we want to do. So with bringing emotions along, it's the same principle. Um, and obviously anxiety, you know, it's an, it is an emotion, I suppose. I feel anxious, you know, it's, you could say, I feel anxious, I feel happy, I feel sad. So, you know, the emotions that we might be talking about here might be um, feeling low, for example, because of your OCD. We don't want to necessarily let that kind of feeling, like that low feeling because of OCD, stop us from doing the things that we would have been doing. Because obviously, the more we do that, the the worse we'll end up feeling because firstly we're avoiding because of OCD but then secondly we're going to potentially feel more low because we're missing out on doing the things that we want to do it's kind of that CBT classic principle um you know your your feelings and thoughts follow your behaviors so if you behave and do the things that you want to do it might actually help you with that low feeling but in the meantime you might need to just go out and about and do the things that you you would would have wanted to do regardless like without those feelings with those feelings with you like with the kind of heavy weight of feeling low or down or perhaps even sad because of you know the way your OCD is making you feel um, so along with that, we also would talk about perhaps, you know, the other feelings that might come with OCD, the other emotions, one of which perhaps being frustration or anger. Um, you know, we can find ourselves becoming easily frustrated and, and to the point of angry because OCD is frustrating. Let's face it. It's confusing and it throws us off and nobody likes that feeling. It's very uncomfortable. Um, but again, here, it's a case of not letting, you know, it, th those feelings of frustration and anger will affect, you know, will we'll not be feeling good, will not be feeling comfortable. But we don't want to be allowing those feelings to rule what we do. So we don't want to be avoiding things because we're feeling wound up or angry or something. Um, you know, especially if those emotions trigger us and start to make us think, oh, that might make me act on my thoughts or something. So, you know, we don't want to be avoiding being around our pets or our partners or our children because we've got these kind of feelings following us around. You know, sometimes I'm not saying like a bit of alone time, there's anything wrong with it, but I'm saying that to allow those feelings of, you know, frustration or anger, regardless of, you know, whether it triggers us or not, or whether it's linked with our OCD or not we don't want to allow us we don't have to act in line with that and we don't have to avoid doing things because of that we can bring the feelings along with us you know we can go and do our exercise class even though we're feeling frustrated even if that feeling of frustration is causing us to have thoughts of what's the point why am I bothering I'm not going to do it right anyway whatever it might bring up it's best not to pay heed to those thoughts and those feelings and do the things that you want to do anyway. Again, because 
if you avoid doing the things that you'd like to do because of that, you could end up making yourself feel worse, as, as, as I said, with the kind of feeling of sadness. So there's other, obviously, emotions that we might want to kind of bring along for the ride. Not just the obvious ones, anxiety, sadness, feeling down, frustrated or angry. But, you know, maybe feeling um, guilt, for example. OCD does bring with it a lot of um, kind of feelings of guilt and shame. And that's why it can be so hard for us to not do compulsions. Because feelings of guilt and shame are so uncomfortable. But the thing is, if we adjust our behaviours because of feelings of guilt and shame that we think are, you know, come, probably coming from OCD, then we're feeding into OCD cycle. You know, we're telling our brains that this is there's reason for this guilt and shame, etc. Whereas if we're able to go about our day to day lives and do the things that we wanted to do whilst feeling those feelings, we're essentially kind of showing our minds that these feelings that I'm getting with these thoughts and obsessions, they're irrelevant. I'm still going to do what I want to do. So it's kind of less ammunition for our sort of our, our minds to send these kind of um, you know, these feelings, emotions, etc. Whereas if we're avoiding, we're saying, yes, maybe I have, you know, I'm, I, I do believe it. I have done something wrong. You know, you're kind of, um, you're living your life on OCD's terms and letting it throw you around with these feelings of guilt and shame. Um, but it, the, you know, these feelings are very uncomfortable to carry around of us. And that does take a lot and it can be tiring when you're going about your day to day life, feeling all these extra sort of emotions, not knowing what, what's authentic and what's not, etc. But the key is here, try like the, the idea of trying to work out what's authentic and what's not is futile. And it only ends up tying us further into our obsessions. So it's best try to, to carry, you know, the feelings around with you without delving into what it means, uh, etc. And, and live your life as if you don't, you know, as if it is all OCD and you're accepting uncertainty of the chance that what if it's not, um, you know, as you work on your recovery and working on things like unconditional life acceptance, unconditional self-acceptance can help you to, um, you know, help to bring down the intensity of some of these emotions as well. Once you start disputing, which can help as you start to learn that feeling guilt is, you know, if guilt is kind of a, well, when it's kind of chronic guilt, it's 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 futile. Obviously, there is a, a a point of guilt where, you know, it might remind us, oh, we haven't done something we need to do, you know, or or maybe um, maybe I could have dealt with that in a different way. But I'm talking about chronic guilt that follows you around, that tears you up inside. It's that extreme emotion that we're talking about here. Um, and then there's other kind of emotions that are sort of not quite as easy to put a label on, but I'm going to try and describe. Um, so in my own experience, it's like when, say, for example, if you're having relationship obsessions or perhaps if you were having obsessions about doubting, um, you know, which gender you identify with or which um, sexuality um, you identify with as well. They're almost feeling of, I'm living my life and it's not quite right. I suppose it's a, a feeling that would be akin to um, the feeling of guilt, but um, it's the feeling of it's not quite right and I'm doing something wrong perhaps in my life because I'm not living, I'm not, what if I'm not living life authentically, you know, if, if you are with the wrong partner or, or if you are dating people of, of the wrong sex, of, of the wrong what gender or if you are um you know living your life as the wrong gender or something like that there's this feeling you know and it can affect the things that you do so, so for example you know if you're going out on dates with your partner but you're having relationship obsessions you feel like strongly this kind of feeling in your gut and, and you, you're feeling in your chest you know what if it's not right and all of that and the same can apply if you're going out with your partner if you're having obsessions about your your sexuality or which gender identification it might be so I'm using those as an example it's almost like that off feeling something's not right so the key here is again like with the other emotions not allowing that feeling or emotion of sort of being sort of not right or living the most authentic life to to dictate the things that you do you still want to be doing the things that you would like to do you know if if there's a is particular sport that you play or 
you know, a particular um, nightclub or bar that you like to hang out. We don't want to be allowing these obsessions to dictate whether or not we do that. We still want to be doing those things. Um, even if we're not 100% certain we're doing the right thing or, or being authentic, just remember also that the idea of kind of authenticity is something that we've all kind of made up and we all have our own I different ideas of authenticity anyway. So, calls into question you know what does it it could mean something completely different to one person to what it does for another so it's useful not to get too hung up on that um and i know that sort of if you're having the kind of obsessions i've just mentioned it, it can you can get quite hung up on that 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 word um so in addition to that there's also kind of other feelings that may um you know come come um come about that may be triggered by various different things so one thing that I think is very important is kind of a feeling of almost is it like an emotional feeling like disconnected I suppose which can come up when we're perhaps suffering from um you know existential kind of themed um obsessions so if we've been analyzing the meaning of things and connected and general connections with people we might kind of wind up feeling disconnected because we're so desperately looking for for that connection and again this can come up with relationship or or um you know other obsessions as well um but when we go looking for those kind of connect you know to the feeling of connection we might end up coming short because we're testing it you know it's almost like it becomes compulsive also you know when we're feeling anxious for long periods of time we might feel a bit disconnected anyway um you know so certain um kind of byproducts of um suffering from anxiety and over over analysis and overworking our brains um such as um derealization depersonalization um, those kind of symptoms of anxiety can make us feel incredibly disconnected as well. But again, it's, 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 um, the more we uh, l allow those feelings to stop us doing things, the more we're giving them power and almost the more we're kind of reinforcing them as well. Because if we feel disconnected or unreal or something like that and, um, alone, and we choose to perhaps not go out and see our friends or family or do, you know, go out in public or anything like that because of those feelings. We're kind of making ourselves more alone anyway. So you're reinforcing those feelings, really. Whereas if you kind of go out, even if you don't feel connected to the people you're with or even the environment that you're in, you're still there physically and these feelings are you're doing things anyway. And yes, they are bloody uncomfortable to carry around but you're not allowing them to dictate your life. Um, and then there's another thing that is related to that, and that is numbness. So it's a kind of a bit like, you know, you're looking a bit like that lack of kind of feeling of connection and things. So you're looking for certain feelings. It might be, you might be looking for, you know, hear something sad. You might be like, why don't I feel anything? Why don't I feel any empathy for that? And again, when you've been suffering for so long with anxiety and overworking your brains and analyzing every thought, feeling, emotion, sensation, urge, anything that you feel, watching yourself like a horse, it's hardly a surprise that when you're kind of looking for an emotion it's not there because your brain's just tired um and uh, you know as confused as you are um so the feeling of numbness again it can it, it can be something that's uncomfortable it's an it's an emotion in itself i suppose um like even if it is a lack of emotion it's still a feeling isn't it something we can describe and put a word to so again we don't want to be um you know avoiding doing things because we feel uncomfortable because we're numb again it's just reinforcing it so Something that can help with, um, you know, carrying these emotions along for the ride, as with anxiety, is disputing the fact that it's not awful and you can stand that feeling. And also seeing that from a mindfulness perspective here, you know, it's having that kind of, it's it's seeing that the same emotion with that level of intensity can't last forever um, with that level of intensity so you could look at it from a mindful perspective I mean that 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 has helped me to an extent just you know knowing that 
that um, our emotions go up and down, they wax and wane. Um, and you start to kind of believe in that more as you work further onto your recovery journey. Don't get me wrong. It's not as simple as, oh, I know that won't last forever. So I won't worry about it. It's not as simple as that. If we think that that emotion is unbearable. So we want to truly see that that emotion is bearable and you can dispute these irrational beliefs about sort of these feelings and emotions, same as you can in terms of disputing that you can cope with certain life circumstances. You can accept yourself regardless of, you know, like regardless of what you do, even if you don't like the fact that you did it or even um, for a moment, even like yourself for doing it, you can accept yourself and not write yourself off as a human being. Um, you know, it's like um, we can accept, uh, same as we work on accepting certain life circumstances, even if it's not ideal, we'll continue striving to improve that circumstance. In the meantime, we recognise that the world isn't swallowing us up right now. We are coping. So it's the same with feeling these feelings as we go about our day to day life is seeing that we the world isn't imploding if we go out even though we're feeling that way. And the more you do that, the more you enforce those beliefs that you can stand it. And when you start to sort of fear it a lot less and start to just let the emotions be there without pushing them away and giving them all that attention, you might find that you stop noticing them as much. And as you stop noticing them as much, you might actually start to notice that some so they can calm down a little bit in intensity. So this is where the disputing comes is useful. And there are plenty of videos on this channel about how to dispute irrational beliefs. So I recommend checking them out. But what I'm saying here is that it's good for us to dispute that, um, you know, that we can cope and tolerate with and stand feeling certain ways as much as we can cope with certain, you know, life conditions, etc. And it's truly seeing that that can really, really help us. But in the meantime, while you're working on that, um, not avoiding things because of these feelings um, and emotions will reinforce those beliefs and also show your mind that, you know, and any sort of um, emotions that are being thrown out as a result of your obsession are irrelevant and that you'll live life in your own terms anyway. So I do hope this video has been useful um, in terms of those kind of, um, you know, those various emotions that you may feel along your OCD recovery journey, whether they're kind of um, as a result of the content of the obsessions themselves or whether they're a result of feelings around OCD and having OCD. Um, as I say, you don't want to be um, allowing them to boss you around and to rule what you do. So thanks ever so much for watching and take care. Bye.